This is a colloquial every <laughs> about statements, <laughs> but only find him any statements. Because in al final alphabet, a knife is finite, and the number of statements that I can ever make, even in my computer, in the finite life, is only for so this. And yeah, I have to qualify. This is that legitimate. Made by Dr. Z. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you allow civilization to continue, one can keep making more statements. Yeah, but eventually, I got news for you, bad news, eventually the sun will explode. <laughs> there are actually but, some depends on the money. There are of other new suns and uh, things like that. Okay, that's the like, case. <laughs> but you could make it perfectly, you could satisfy me by just saying that instead of for every statement, you could just say a statement. Okay. Which is exactly okay, the modification that you made before. Okay, <laughs> okay sure. And some math I didn't give you any content. Eh, but I have to give you some content. Somewhere. But then the, the, the philosophical justification. So what do we have? We have a big ocean of gibberish. And then we have nice islands of decidable. I, I use decidable because it's easier to use, but in my sense. For which there exist algorithms for proving it. So for example, the statement 13 times 15 equals 14 square minus 1 belongs to a class of decidable statements. And there are algorithms you learn in school to do multiplication and subtraction, so you can prove it. So one project that is fun to do is discover more and more classes of decidable theorems. So this, in the old days, was considered a theorem. You had to use axioms, commutativity, distributivity, blah, 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 blah. And, and even still, in mass 300, when you teach it, uh, you have this torturous pedantic way of proving it, proving it. But it's really an algorithm that Maple knows very well, that's extended. So every identity between polynomials is a, a decidable. And something not so obvious, Cassini for Fibonacci. This is not so well known. This also belongs to a class of decidable statements. And every theorem in geometry, thanks to René Descartes and computer algebra, is trivially decidable. For example, Morley theorem, if you take it like sectors, and nice theorems from about 1904. If you do, if I do it nicely, it will be an equilateral. This takes two seconds or less on my computer to prove it. Because every statement in geometry, at least in plane geometry or uh, five dimensional uh, geometry, can be written as a blind statement using either trig or called a geometry, and then some statement that they really exist. So this is completely decidable. So, and now that even today we have theorems. Until about uh, 20 years ago, the following formula equation was completely not trivial. For example, this one. Also from around 904, the big songs identity. If you look at the entries of Pascal's triangle, and you cube them, and it takes the alternating sum, you get a nice answer. This is called Dixon's identity. K goes from. <coughs> and there are about 10 proofs, each of them with 40, uh, not 40, but 10 pages. Uh, and each such Identity involving binomial coefficients until 20 years ago required its own ad hoc proof and was considered 
a, a public body, a article. Then came W and Z and proved that this belongs to a wide class of these citable identities. And now the so-called WZ algorithms can prove it completely rigorous. Even though a posteriori, it is for every integer A. It's really true for symbolic A. And the way you prove it is by induction. But you teach the computer the induction. There's a certain clear-cut algorithm that I don't have time to tell you, but you can look it up, the so-called Zabuka algorithm, that decides whether it's true or false. Not only that, if you don't have it, you can discover it from scratch. It is nice. This is called the holonomic ansatz. And let me tell you what it means. The simplest ansatz is really numbers. And then you have polynomials. And you know you can add polynomials. And you can subtract polynomials. You can multiply polynomials. And every identity is polynomials. For example, this identity. It's decidable. There is a clear-cut algorithm for proving it by teaching the computer how to expand and so on. So this is a polynomial. And how do you do it? This is a canonical form. Every object, even this, no matter how complicated, you can expand it and write it in expanded form. So that's a canonical form. For example, even simpler example, one half, that's my third. How to prove this? You make this into canonical form. You make this into canonical form. This is A over B. The A and B are relatively prime. And you can prove that A equals B. So similarly here, this beast belongs to the so-called holonomic ansatz. And this beast corresponds, it belongs to the holonomic ansatz. So what is a holonomic ansatz? Let me tell you very briefly. It's a little bit like Fibonacci. What is the definition of the Fibonacci numbers? Reminding you, it's f sub n equals f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2 and f of 0 equals 0, f of 1 equals 1. It looks like an infinite sequence. But it's not really an infinite sequence. It's a finite object. And that's what it does. How many key strokes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 3 months. This doesn't count. In 22 key strokes, I describe this object. It's called infinite, quote, unquote, sequence. But it's not. It's a finite object. This, and more generally, if you have constant coefficient, generalized Fibonacci sequences, and if you add more, it's called C finite sequences. And the holonomic ansatz is sequences that satisfy recurrences with polynomial coefficients. Well, the C's are now. So the fundamental theorem of WZ theory tells you that every such thing, no matter how complicated, any sum of products of binomial coefficients, make it as, as, as ugly as That's like this fraction of polynomials. This algorithm, this algorithm, algorithm that finds a recurrence with my own coefficients for this one. Data for this one. Then you see if they're the same. And they have, suppose they have a order of 1,000. You only have to check the first 1,000 cases. Find in many cases, the computer can also do it. And QED, you have a decision algorithm for proving it. So therefore, the exciting 